Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here, and today we're going to reveal another person under the mask, and it's the sun. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead, you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. So if you're new to the YouTube channel, hi, how are you? My name is Joey Contino, and I'm an executive audio producer in New York City, where it's my job to go ahead and provide audio for my clients. And when that audio sounds bad, it's my job to make it sound good. And that could be maybe taking out a high frequency, maybe a low frequency, but in this case, during The Mask Singer, it's going ahead and pitch correcting audio. That's right. Every single week, Fox gives us these brand new clue packages, and in them, it's the celebrity talking. But Fox is smart. They're like, hey, we can't let them talk with their real voices because people are going to recognize the voice. So they speed up the audio and pitch it up. That way you have no idea who it is. Now doing what I do, I figured I could slow it down. I could pitch correct it. That way we can have the real celebrity voice. Now that plus the clues, we can determine who is under the mask. And now we've been using the system since day one of season one of The Mask Singer. And we've gotten them all right with the exception of one. And so today, we're going to use my method to determine who's under the mask of the sun. Now, if you're like me, you went ahead and you put all the clues on your computer. And so we're going to go through all the clues, listen to the audio, match it up, and then answer all of the clues. Now, the clues we have so far, we have a couple from the preseason. We have some from episode one and episode three, because so far, the way the schedule was is that we pretty much had them every other week. Next time we do come on, we do get group C. So let's go ahead and dive into the preseason clues. We have, I'm the sun because I always love to light up the world around me. We've all had periods of darkness, but my powerful rays have been known to break through the clouds. If you're trying to figure out who I am, here's a hint. The sun knows how to shine like a torch, even during a freezing winter. America, my identity will never dawn on you. The clues after this are from episode one. We see a card that says fun director and it's a gold card. We see a dog sitting at the bar getting a drink from the men in black. She mentioned extreme seasons and once having felt like the center of the universe. She said that stardom came with a lot of pressure and she got burned out and fell into a deep depression. The visual clues included Mickey Mouse and a Jaguar. And the last clue was that she felt the mask was a good reflection of who she is personality-wise. After that, the clues were from episode three. She says, I missed out on a lot of my childhood growing up in a fractured home. She says that I've made up for some lost time by discovering childlike outlets to make life magical. There may be another Disney reference there. She says that going into the woods helped her find harmony in nature. Then we see a blue butterfly with heart-shaped wings. She says, I love dirt in my toes, a young memory of mine, and the land that slides as my heart walks the line, which is a rhyme, which kind of plays off of who we think this person could be. She says that I became a whiz in cooking up tasty treats for like-minded immaterial girls as she stirs a giant copper kettle with a large spoon. Then we see a lock of hair tied with a blue ribbon and a candy cane with some glass mason jar. And we have two more clues left. She says, I'm always looking on the bright side, burning ugly rumors out of my life as she burns some paper with the words ugly rumors and the circle of the candles. Now, those are all the clues we have for the sun. Let's listen to the pitch correct audio. Here's the audio they gave us. Well, when I put this mask on, I felt like it was a reflection of who I am personally. And I like it. And here's our pitch correct audio. Well, when I put this mask on, I felt like it was a reflection of who I am personally. And I like it. So does that sound familiar to you? Do you know that voice? I'll let you guess. I'll give you a few seconds to guess. All right, my guess is ba -da -ba -da -ba -bum, Leanne Rhymes. That's right, that's my guess right here. Let's go ahead and compare her speaking to the pitch correct audio. Here you go. Well, when I put this mask on, I felt like it was a reflection of who I am. Such a, I think I wrote this from such a human perspective, not Leanne Rhymes the singer. Now let's go ahead and compare the singing voice. Now what makes this very unique? Leanne already sang this song before, which her first song was Lizzo's Cause Baby I Love You. And she sang it on a tour bus, and I'm pretty sure you've watched this video before, but let's just compare both of the voices. 
So yeah, man. The talking voice sounds the same. The singing voice sounds the same. Let's go ahead and answer all the clues we have. Let's start off with the preseason clues. The first one, her talking about she's a sun and she loves the light of the world around her, but she had periods of darkness, but rays of sunshine came through. She does have horrible anxiety and depression. She did go ahead and go to rehab a while back, but I wanted to read this quote from her own personal blog, which is actually on her candle website. She wrote this about three weeks ago, sometime in September. She says, I'm drained. I can't complete thoughts. Words aren't coming very easily. I'm emotional, antsy, and I have no idea what to do with it all. I've been here many times before, but every time I find myself in this place, I ask the same question. Why do I feel like this? Like I don't already know the answer by heart. This, my friends, is the come down from the high. So even after going to rehab and dealing with all these things, she still has horrible depression. And luckily she does have coaches and people that she does meet with to get her through things, especially she's got a great husband who can help her through it. But um, she does have depression. So there's your periods of darkness, but she will pull through. After that, she says, if you're trying to figure out who I am, here's a hint. This sun knows how to shine like a torch, even in the freezing winter. The torch and freezing winter references go to when she performed at the Winter Olympics back in 2002. She performed Light the Fire Within. The next clues are from episode two. We see the fun director, Gold Card. She does have multiple albums and singles that have been certified gold by the RIAA. And one interesting fact, she won her first Grammy at the age of 14. Did you know that? Child actor right there and child singer. Uh, the dog sitting in the bar. This is a reference to her late dog. It's, I, I believe I'm gonna pronounce it wrong. I think it's Evie. Unfortunately, her dog got attacked by a coyote. Yeah, that's kind of really sad. Um, once again, she had a lot of upsetting times in her life. Uh, she mentioned extreme seasons and having felt once the center of her attention in the universe. We do know, once again, she has horrible anxiety. She used to be at the top of her game. A lot of rumors hit her way, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And obviously took her down from the center of her attention all the way down and made her very depressed. Luckily for her, someday she's, she's sad, but she gets out of it. She said stardom came with a ton of pressure and she got burned. She fell into a deep depression. So of course stardom had a lot of pressure for her because she was just a kid. Remember she was 14 when she won her first Grammy. She started singing at the age of eight. Now for a kid, that's a very high pressure job. And I know back on April 15th, this year actually, she did an interview with People Magazine, which keep in mind, that's probably when they started writing these clue packages. She talked about being put into a mental facility to go ahead for, I think it was like 30 something days to get her out of her depression. Uh, after that, she mentioned a, well, not that she mentioned, we saw a Mickey Mouse and a Jaguar. We do know that she did do a Disney special back in 1997 called Leanne Rhymes in Concert. It was filmed in Walt Disney World in Orlando, and then she also recorded a song for the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. How cool is that, right? For the Jaguar, she actually has a book called Jag, which is about a Jaguar. At the end of the episode, she had said that she felt that the mask was a reflection of who she is personally. And I mean, sun means happiness. And now she's happy now that she's going through all the bad stuff and everything's okay now. Next clues are from episode three. She said, I missed out a lot of my childhood growing up in a fractured home. The fractured home refers to her parents getting divorced. And to add more drama to it, she went up suing her father. It doesn't say for what, but she did sue her father. She said that she's making up for lost time by discovering childlike outlets to make life magical. We do know that she has her own Barbie doll. Pretty cool, right? Take a look. She says that she likes going into the woods to get closer to nature. And one cool thing is that it turns out that she has a routine of self-care, which includes Ying Yoda and breathing work with a coach. So whenever she gets anxiety, she calls them up and they get her back down. After this, she says, I love dirt in my toes. We do know that is a reference to um, pretty much her being country because she's a country singer. And she mentions walks the line, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was a country singer. After that, we see her stirring a kettle and we don't know what's inside of it, but at the end of the clue package, you sort of see some candles. Did you know she owns her own candle company and makes candles? I didn't know that too. I'm gonna pronounce this completely wrong. I think it's called Soul of Everly. 
think it's playing off of Lian. I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing on that, but I could be pronouncing that wrong. After that, we see a locket of hair tied with a blue ribbon and a candy cane in some of the glass mason jars. Couple stories here. First of all, Blue is the name of Leanne's debut album and was the title of her first single, which got her her first Grammy. Pretty cool, right? The second one I thought was quite clever, and I found this in an interview. I forget where it was online. But the candy cane, she loves Christmas. And one thing that she does for her stepchildren, because she never had kids on her own, she lines up candy canes from their door all the way to the Christmas tree, even though the kids are like, and I think they're mid-teenager years. She still does it. And she says that her, the stepkids are like, why, why do you keep doing this? Kind of, you know, why do you keep doing it? She's like, I love doing it. I love doing this because I love Christmas. So now we've got a few more clues left. She says she's always looking on the bright side, burning ugly rumors out of my life. This is interesting. The rumor refers to, I'll go all the way back to 2010. She started dating this guy named Eddie Sobrian. No, I can't pronounce his name. She wound up marrying him a year later, but he was also married to a lady named Brandy. I have no ill will feelings for her. And so what was weird is that there was an affair going on there. And at the same time, Leanne was married to a gentleman named Dean Sherman. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm not gonna pronounce it. I'm not even gonna try. And so she was also having an affair. I've never felt the hurt so deep. And ultimately they both got divorced and then they marry each other, Leanne and Eddie. And that caused a ton of drama, which obviously back, I think it was uh, 2013 when she finally went to rehab. So you could see all where it started and kind of what happened over the years until she finally like was, that was it, I have to go away. <laughs> but um, luckily she's doing great. Now, we did see the clue for ugly rumors in a circle of candles. The one thing I'm realizing is that she was in Ugly Coyote, right? She was an ugly coyote. Yes, I forget what character she was in, but she was in there. So that was that connection. I didn't realize till now. And then the last clue was the magic eight ball. The eight ball could represent the age where she appeared on Star Search when she started singing. So those are all the clues. I know this one's kind of long. She's a lot to go through. But let me know if you agree with me in the comment section. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey. I'll see you later. Bye. This is hard.